Hi everyone. So a few weeks ago I started designing this Guitar Hero controller. Um, and a few, earlier last week I posted a post on Reddit that got a lot of attention. Um, and people were wanting to see how to build one of these. So I figured I would do a video showing you guys how to assemble one of these uh, miniature Clone Hero controllers that I designed in Shaper 3D and printed out on my 3D printer. Um, this is the model that actually has the removable neck. Um, it is getting ready to be posted up on my printables page, but everything that I'm about to show you is going to work for both versions of this. Um, this model just allows it to be a little bit more modular, so if anyone uh, in the future ever wants to create additions to this, uh, they're able to uh, make it connect into the system. All right, let's get into it. Right, so obviously the first thing you got to do is print out the parts. I'm not going to go too into this just because there's uh, so much variance that can happen depending on the materials that you're using and the settings you want to use and your preferences and printing habits. Uh, so, you know, if there's any questions about that, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll, I'll get back to you guys with my limited knowledge on 3D printing. Um, but once the parts are actually printed out, there's a little bit of prep work that needs to happen. So the first thing we'll look at is uh, the supports. Um, I like to print with supports uh, because it gives a little bit extra structural support and rigidity to the, uh, the mounts. Um, so inside of here there are pieces that we need to remove. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. Um, I just like to use a pair of flush cutters to get in and actually pull things off. For the body itself, I like to use um, brown switches. These are low profile brown switches that make the action just a little bit more uh, natural. Um, also, I don't really like the clicky feel of blues and I don't like the linear feel of reds. So this is just like that nice sweet spot for me. Um, we're also going to use a two-way switch. This is a two-way switch that has uh, two different power outputs if you wanted to put uh, two circuits on it. Um, I actually just use it as an on-off switch for this uh, build. Uh, I have a tilt sensor, an Arduino Pro Micro that we'll be using to connect this to the computer and program the buttons. Um, and also I want to show you guys the difference between regular uh, profile switches and low profile or mid low profile switches. Um, as you can see, there is a pretty significant difference in the amount of travel and uh, height that you get inside of this. Um, this is my preference. Also the low profiles are really nice with a shorter neck, or I, I'm sorry, a uh, shorter head stock or lower fretboard, I guess would be the right way of putting it. Um, but yes, and for this build, we're going to be using the medium low profiles. Uh, I also have built everything to, or designed everything to be built and put together with M3 screws. Uh, if anyone wants to adjust those in their own settings for their own builds, you know, go right on ahead and feel free to remix my design. And then for the neck itself, I'm going to be using one of these uh, grub screws um, or a knurled, I guess it's a knurled screw. Uh, this basically just holds the neck into the body so it doesn't fall apart when you're playing. So for the neck, um, the fretboard itself has uh, standard mounting points for uh, Cherry MX style switches. Um, these are Gatorons and I think they're Kale switches um, or Kale styles box switches. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to want to take these and you're actually going to uh, insert them from the top and push them until they click in and then they'll be mounted in the back. You want to make sure that the poles are all lined up as well. Um, makes it a lot easier to solder when we're actually doing our build. Now to wire the fretboard after you get your switches in place, I'm just going to use a piece of 14 gauge um, solid core wire that I made a little curl at the tip with, and then went ahead and pre tend it. I'm just going to slip that here on the top post of the key furthest away from me, like this. I'm just going to come in and solder that down. Okay. 
Sorry, I uh, kind of tended the hole together, so I had to use the iron to get it on the, the pin. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go through here. Just got to flow a little bit more solder on that just to be safe. So I'll tend the tip of my iron, come in here, and just let that flow into the joint. All right, well, it's not going to be... It's just not going to be friendly today. Let's see if we can get this to work. Clean off the tip of my solder. And I'm going to turn my fume extractor on. I hope the, the noise isn't too much for you guys here. is finally on. Now what I'm going to do for the rest of this, I'm actually going to take this, uh, and the reason I use the solid core is because it holds a little bit more rigidity. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to bring it right up to here, and I'm going to take a craft knife, and I'm going to remove the casing on the wire right here. Clean that up a little bit. This will do it off camera, I apologize. It's a little bit easier for me to see it on my side. I just went ahead and cut off some of the what the cabling here and actually showed some bare wire. So I'm gonna take this and wrap it around the post and then take this and I'm gonna make sure it comes into contact with the top post here. I'm gonna wrap it back around here on the pin and just like that. And that'll help keep it in place so that I can come in with my soldering iron. Clean up a little bit more of that casing there. And now I can just blow some solder on that joint. This is the first time I've used this kind of cable, actually. Usually I just tear up a Cat5 cable. Um, it's a bit messier than I usually do it, but you can kind of get the idea of what I'm wanting to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up with some tin snips, or I'm sorry, some side nips. But, thankfully, there is a good joint there. I don't know if we can get it to focus in. All right, so now that that is done, we're going to take individual wires. This is just a Cat5 cable that I've torn up. Cannibalize some of the wires from. They are the right diameter for this kind of work. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm going to solder it to these pins and get them ready to connect to the uh, DB9 connector down here. And I'll come back here in a second when I'm done with that. So now that we have all the individual wires uh, wired to the keys, we are going to attach it to this DB9 connector. I like to put the male side of this on the neck so the female side's pins can be protected by the body of the guitar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off and attach them to the leads. The leads I like to use, uh, let's see here if I can see what they have. I'm not entirely sure what the numbers are here, but basically on the tall side, 
the side that has the five pins, I like to put all five pins of the, uh, the, the colored leads, the positive leads. And then I like to take the ground and I like to put it on the bottom right of the DB9 connector. Um, you'll see why in just a little bit. All right, I'll be right back. Now soldering serial connectors can be kind of weird. Um, the best way that I found to do this, or the best way to get things set up, is take your soldering iron and just heat up the tray here and then flow solder into each one of them. Um, and by doing that, it gives us solder to uh, place our wires in uh, when we go back to actually put the wires inside of it. All right now, so the way we're gonna install this is to use uh, the serial cable adapter and we're gonna put it in this little neck pocket here. This is going to be the retaining bolt. There's a nut inside of here that we'll secure later. I just have it in there so I don't lose it. Um, but we want to make sure that it slips right in and it's okay that the edges are hanging over a little bit. We'll trim that later. All right. We'll take the wires that we just soldered here and we'll make sure we trim them down to an appropriate size and we will get everything soldered up. Now if you look closely on the serial connector and uh, mind my soldering iron getting a little crazy there. So on the top there's actually numbers that wire that line these uh, trays and what we're going to do is we're going to try and line up our wires to this to where the green button goes into one, red goes into two, yellow goes into three, blue goes into four, and then orange goes into five. And then down here on what I believe is nine we're going to put our ground wire. All right, now with that done and the serial cable taken care of as well, make sure that the pins are facing up. This is the orientation you want it to be in. So the five pins are actually gonna be on top of the fretboard. Um, usually I like to spin this a few times just to kind of clean the wires up. And then take this, go ahead and close the neck up on it. Push all the pieces together and center. I also clipped the wings on the side of this to make it fit a little easier. What I'm gonna do now is take this piece, you can take the top off to access the middle, and then you're just gonna take some hot glue and you're going to uh, hot glue, I guess. One sec. Okay, lay down some hot glue. And take your connector and just sit it in place, right like that. And just hold it for a little bit, let it set. Go ahead and do yourself a test fit again to make sure everything looks clean. And there you go. You have put together the neck. After you've built the neck and got everything put together, what I like to do is I like to run a bead of super glue down the seam and then just take everything, close it up, and set some books on top of it to uh, weigh it down and that'll let everything kind of weld together without any cracks. So after you've got your neck built up, you're gonna go ahead and wire the female side of the cable. And it's basically the same exact thing. Um, color of the wires don't really matter. You just want to make sure that you're putting the same wires in. So up here we're going to have on the five side, we're going to have five wires going to it. And then on the bottom right of this one, we are going to have the uh, black cable. And I guess if you look at it this way, it's the bottom left. And that's our ground. And the reason for that is, of course, because if we put it on the bottom right here, it's going to be mirrored. So when this plugs in, you have one-to-one -one connections. All right, and then this cable goes on this slot in the body. So let me move my vent hood out of the way. So what I usually do is I take this and I bend it 90 degrees and create a little bit of space here. Um, put all the wires over to one side and then I just slip it in this little slot and put it through just like that. And that gives us space for our strum bar to still go in and everything else. And then Usually what I'll do is I'll do a test fit here. So I'll take the 
neck and I'll put it in and then I will just make sure that everything slips together and holds together and that the neck is sitting in the right place lining up with all of the holes and there we go all right after that I will just take the wires and kind of bring them around to about the area where I'm going to be putting the Pro Micro at, and I'll cut a little bit away. So I'll probably take it to about here, and I will just trim off the rest of that wire and put it aside for later. So I'll go about right here and cut. And I'll like I'll leave the ground cable long because I'm going to run that throughout the body. Now, what we're going to do here, now that the body is complete, is we're going to put our switches in. So I like to put box navy switches in the strummer, and then just go ahead and use the kale uh, brown boxes or blues or reds or whatever here in these, because these are really just more for the start and select buttons, so you don't have to worry about feel or anything like that, unless you really want to. So let me get some of my switches up here. two full-size brown switches and two full-size navy box switches. Now these are the cat's pajamas. I think these might be the closest feeling switches to the actual Guitar Hero controller. Good tactile click, not super loud like on a blue switch, but it has a really nice tactile force, uh, an actuation force that you have to hit that uh, significantly reduces double strumming whenever you are actually strumming in game. So what we'll do here, um, we're gonna go ahead and wire these up and then we'll just put them in their respective holes and get everything wired up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll be right back. So what we have here, we have the ground from the plug running uh, up to the um, tilt switch and then running to both of the brown switches here for the start and select. I have two um, positive cables running up here. Um, this is gonna go to the switch that will actually turn on and off the tilt sensor. Uh, there are two positive leads coming off of this that will go to the microcontroller. And basically the same down here. I ran a common ground and then two power lines coming from the uh, strummer switch. And then we have our five leads coming from the serial connector here. And we're gonna wire all of these to the Pro Micro board. Now with the Pro Micro board, you have all of these numbered pins that you can connect to a button or an analog source to send a signal to your computer. Um, the apes are for analog signals, but they can also work as digital signals, or we're going to use um, any, of the, any of the numbered ones to connect our wires. So for the five that are coming from the fretboard, I usually like to just start at two and work all the way down to six, and then seven and eight for the strummer switches, and then for the start select buttons, I like to put them on the opposite side, usually in 1514 or maybe 1610. All right, so I've turned the board upside down. I have put my wires through the board and I've got my vent fan on it. I'll go ahead and put some flux on here just to make this a little bit easier. That is a lot of flux. Let's see. Let's clean that up a little bit. Alright. Oops. I'm just going to take my soldering iron and I'm going to walk down these pins here. I apologize if this is awkward. It's hard for me to do this on my camera, so I'll try and do it as best I can here. Okay, there
with some nippers and I will just take everything off. Flush. Just ensure that there are no shorts in my circuits. And everything looks good from what I can tell. And we'll just repeat that along the rest of the board. All right, so now that everything's wired up, you can see here that I have, I pulled the serial cable out and I'll show you why here in a little bit. Um, but I have all five wires and the ground. Uh, the ground is running here to the two switches and to the tilt sensor, uh, and then running to the Pro Micro board. And I have another ground running from the strummers to the Pro Micro. Uh, I mean, if you wanted, you could technically run all these together, but this is a bit cleaner for me while I was doing it. Um, and I have the switches also configured to, to, or I'm sorry, also connected to the Pro Micro board. And I have a. I've taken the positive lead from the switch to the tilt sensor. Um, this is the select button and the tilt sensor will uh, basically activate the select button and give you star power in the game. And I've put it up to a switch here that will basically interrupt that power, um, which lets you turn it off in between sessions so you don't have any phantom select button presses while you're in menus and things like that. All right, now to put the strummer switch in place, or the, the strum bar in place. Uh, when you print this out, you're gonna wanna go ahead and put some M3 bolts, or I'm sorry, M3 nuts inside of the recesses, inside of the strum bar. And that is where these bolts will come through. This is an M3, uh, I think these are 20 millimeter bolts. Uh, you just kinda eyeball what works the best. You want it to come across and also rest and meet where that bolt would be. So we'll go ahead and put these inside here. And I, that's the reason I pulled the serial cable out. It gives me access to this uh, hole back here to install the strum bar. All right, and after doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these back enough to get the strum bar in place. And sometimes the strum bar can be a little tight, so sometimes you might have to just thread it in but that will put it where it needs to go. And you can come over here and do the same with this piece as well. Sometimes this can be kind of a tight fit. If that's the case, I will just get the screwdriver um, and I'll just screw it in. Now you don't want to make this too tight. If it's too tight, you're never going to be able to actuate the thing. It'll just stay in one place. But if you loosen it up, you know, the nice thing is it doesn't have to be tight. doesn't have to be medium. I mean, just let it flop around. You know, it'll just give you a lot of play here inside of your, the strum bar. And there you go. Now we'll go ahead and just reinstall the serial connector. And just to make sure it's in line with everything, we'll get the neck back out here. And we will put in the pocket and make sure that it is aligned vertically. Now, the reason I don't glue this down is uh, I wanna leave it floating because once this comes out, if there is any kind of like movement inside of this, or let's say this doesn't necessarily fit, um, like mine actually had to sand down to get it to fit, but with your print, it might not. Uh, that allows it to just kind of have a little bit of vertical movement, so it always will fit whenever you're pushing through. And that's some of the reasons I use the um, DB9 is because it is pretty big and it allows for tolerances. So if it, let's say, you know, it was a millimeter out, if you went to push it in, it would line with itself, um, you know, or do a better job of it than something, say, more, uh, specific or more uh, fine. All right, now with all that being done, we can take our body buttons and put them on the switches here. Or I can drop it on the ground. 
All right. So we'll install the body switches here. And I chose to put an adapter here. Uh, this is basically just USB micro to USB micro, but it lets me um, not have to have, you know, 10 feet of cable coming off of this to be usable. Uh, I can use three feet if I want to be next to my Steam Deck. I can use 10 feet if I want to be away from my computer or my TV. So it just kind of gives you some flexibility with the wires that you're using. But everything here is installed. We can go ahead and close everything up. And just like that, we have play, start, slides work. And then on the back, we'll go ahead and install all of our bolts. I believe I'm using M3 uh, 14 millimeter bolts for the body, uh, but really just anything that'll fit and actually go through the holes to deep enough to get inside of that threaded insert. That's what you're looking for. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna get the buttons installed on this and glue this down. And then I am going to show you guys how to configure this in the guitar configurator. Okay, so I have my guitar controller built up now. Um, fingers crossed everything is wired appropriately and I have it plugged into my computer and I have Sanjay 900's guitar configurator in front of me. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to uh, look to see our uh, device down here. Now I've gone ahead and programmed mine. If this is your first time using the programmer and the first time using this board, when you go in to set it up, it's going to identify it as a just a regular microcontroller and you'll need to program it. Um, so when you hit continue, it'll prompt you to do that. It's totally normal if it pops up. But when we hit it, it's going to take us to the configurator screen and actually show us the guitar that we're wanting to, uh, to map. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this to map the buttons to the inputs on the Pro Microcontroller. So I'm actually going to change the, change the settings here. Uh, I'm going to configure this as a PS3 controller because I'm using a Mac and for whatever reason the Xbox controller doesn't, or X input doesn't also want to work. So PS3 is usually my go-to for this. Um, so I'm going to start by, by clicking change the pin binding. Uh, you'll want to use automatically find pin binding and then you will press the button for it. Hey, look at that, we have a button. So we'll hit apply change and we will go down to red and we'll do the same exact thing. Automatically find pin binding, press the red key, apply change, yellow, automatically find, yellow key, apply change, blue fret, automatically find, press blue, apply change, orange, apply change, strum bar, strum up. We're going to hit automatically find pin binding, strum up, Apply change, strum down, same. I start button, find pin binding, start. And select, play, apply change. So if you look over here, you'll see that you have, oh, for some reason that didn't stick. I probably didn't hit the right button. Apply changes, all right. So I have 16 for the start, I have 10, we've got six, four, three, two, five, eight, and nine. So these are the pins on the board that are going to the actual controller. Um, as far as things look now, they are set. Um, what we're gonna hit now is write, and that's it. Uh, this will go and go ahead and write this to our controller and then when it is done, it's gonna, you're gonna hear disconnect, reconnect, and then your guitar is configured. And uh, now it's time to try it out in Clone Hero. I'll be right back. All right, so everything is connected. We have everything mapped. Now we have Clone Hero open, and it's time to play a little bit of Clone Hero. So let's see if this guitar works. So uh, this is a fresh install. I don't really have any uh, stuff in here, so we're just gonna play whatever is on the fresh install. Also, don't judge my playing. It's been forever since I was a good player in Clone Hero or Guitar Hero.
right, so I really enjoy you guys watching me build this. I hope you have enjoyed yours that you've built yourself, or if you're thinking about building one, I mean, go for it. Share it on my printables page. I have been beyond surprised at how much excitement this has really generated and how much interest people have had in my project. So, you know, it just means the world to me to see everybody um, just throwing kudos and making remixes and just sharing love on their community. Um, if you have any questions, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to me on Reddit. Uh, you can put comments on my printables page or comments on the video here. And, you know, keep your eyes out for the next project because I definitely enjoy doing this kind of stuff. All right. Thanks a lot. Bye.